It's a Tampa Bay touchdown. Yeah, the penalty flag will not count. It was going to be a hit on Brad Johnson, which was declined by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, of course, after scoring the 75-yard touchdown. And so Martin Gramatica will come on to try and even the score. After Keenan McCardell's longest touchdown of his career. And we had talked so much about not allowing the Buccaneers run after the catch in the very next play. Boom, catch, and a long run right. afterwards. And it was a deep pass, too. And that's the first deep pass we've seen Brad Johnson throw today. And so the Buccaneers on a third down with a 75-yard pass from Brad Johnson to Keenan McCardell. And we're all knotted here in the first quarter. Well, three plays, 79 yards is easy to do when you complete a 75-yard touchdown score to Keenan McCardell like Brad Johnson just did. So the Buccaneers have evened up the score at seven apiece here. Just about 10 minutes into the first quarter in San Francisco, the Buccaneers trying to get their first two-game win streak together all season long. Won the opener, then lost week two. One loss, one trying to string two together. Well, Kurt, we talk about how well Brad Johnson is playing, and one of the things that people have criticized Brad Johnson for is now being the best deep passer in the NFL. I'll tell you, that was a perfectly thrown deep pass on that last play. Well, after the roughing penalty, this ball actually spotted at the 45-yard line, so a little pooch kick made by Martin Gramatica and Brandon Lloyd picks it up, run out of bounds at the 19. I talked about Zach Bronson getting out of position. Here he is here, so McCardell's gonna come across the middle of the field, and Bronson actually just takes a bad angle. He comes here when he needs to go out. He needs to get over the top of Keenan McCardell, but I think he's going for the interception right there, and you can see how very close he comes to getting his hands on this football. I think Keenan McCardle right now, he is the deep threat. He is the passing threat, especially with receiver Keyshawn Johnson struggling with that, that thigh injury that he's got. John Lynch still on the sideline. John Howell comes in to replace him right now at safety. And that could be a huge loss for this Buccaneer defense. Garrison Hurst dancing around, picks up four yards. And this Buccaneer secondary has had to work with injuries. We mentioned Brian Kelly missed time last week, and they kind of rotated guys in there. He got Jermaine Phillips on the field, and they feel he's a good safety. But right now, with that strong safety position being what they need, John Howell comes in. Well, I think the question for Brian Kelly, and also they got Shelton Quarles back, I think the question for those guys is they're still playing with the effects of their injuries. Kelly's got that torn pec muscle. Quarles has got the cast on his arm. So how well can they tackle against Garrison Hurst? And now they've got to play without Lynch for a while. On second down, there's Hurst again. Cut it back. Garrison Hurst with room. John Howell forced to make the tackle at the 41 yard line a pickup of 18 yards by the running back from the 49ers. Well Rondé Barber told us yesterday that to him Garrison Hurst looks like he's six years younger than he was last season and I think that's true I mean and, and, and you look right here there's that Tampa two we talked about two safeties so the 49ers know there's only seven run defenders up there. And you see Powell, the safety, coming in late on that play. There's Garrison Hurst once again, flagged down on the play, however. Before the ball snapped, ball start, number 65, offense, five yards, still first down. And Kurt, I'm talking about this Tampa 2, and I just want to explain it. A lot of people know the 2 is the two safeties, so that means cover 2. The corners are up here. That lets them press. The problem is you don't have the 8th man in to defend the run, so it's a good pass defense because it allows your corners to play up. They've got help deep, but it's a weak run defense. After the false start penalty on Ron Stone, it's 1st and 15. First out of the backfield with a block. Down the sideline. First down and more into Buccaneer territory. Finally forced out right at the 37 yard line. Dwight Smith pushed him out of bounds, but another big game for this 49er offense. 26 yards on the play. Kurt, this thing starts with good pass protection for Jeff Garcia. His offensive line does a nice job, and they set this screen up perfectly. Nice blocks downfield. And then Garrison Hurst, the younger Garrison Hurst, 
really having an impact on this game already. All the 11 quarter. years of experience showing right now. And remember, he missed two full seasons trying to come back from a knee injury. There's Carbon Barlow giving him a break, and Barlow only picks up a yard on the play. Well, Simeon Rice makes a tackle on the run play, and he's probably reacting to Howie Long in the pregame show, who called him, a, after Pam Oliver's interview, called Simeon Rice a skill position player, which well, is an insult. Well, but remember, <laughs> Simeon doesn't, he doesn't listen to the press, he doesn't read the papers, yeah. he doesn't do that thing, so he doesn't know what Howie Long I said know, on the pregame show. But I'll tell you I what, like though, Simeon Rice, though. I, I like him, too, but I, I think he's more of a cat than a dog. Yeah. I mean, Howie oh, yeah. Long was a dog. I mean, he'd rush the passer, but he'd play the run, too. Simeon's a cool cat. He really is. I like his style. Kevin Barlow cutting back. Another first down for the 49ers and another big run. Barlow takes it 12 yards. John Howell in on the tackle, and right now this 49er offense able to run the ball. Here's Simeon with the block by Jed Weaver, the tight end, who gets him to the outside and just runs him right out of that play. And that's the kind of, you know what I'm saying, that's the kind of skill position player that Howie Long was talking about, to get blocked out of a play by a tight end. First down at the 25, Barlow again. Seven-yard gain, John Howell on the tackle, and it seems as though, right now at least, this 49er offense is running at will. They are. They're running extremely well, and they're also setting up Simeon Rice in the process, because watch Quaim Harris. He's got Simeon Rice out here. He sets him up for, gives him a pass look, so Rice runs upfield, and the running play cuts underneath Simeon Rice. So that's the chess game within the football game to help your rookie, Quaim Harris, against the great pass rusher, Simeon Rice. Once again, Barlow falls forward. Gonna be right near that first down marker at the 15. Derek Brooks with the tackle, and it looks like he got it. 49ers right now, Kurt, in the first quarter with 71 yards rushing. And that was before that run by Kevin Barlow. Right now, they're at the 75-yard mark. The Buccaneer defense only gives up 93 a game. They've almost got that after one quarter. And when you look at a team like Tampa Bay, the world champions, they lost two this season, one to Carolina, one to Indy. The 49ers thought they were going to take the Carolina formula, which was run the football to beat them. What do you do? Back in San Francisco for the start of the second quarter. Bucks and 49ers all even at seven. I'm Kurt Menefee. He's Tim Green. And so far, the 49ers do run run. Yeah, I mean, it's it's even at seven. But the 49ers right now, with 75 yards running in the first quarter alone, are really starting to dominate this game. And they get into the end zone. Ty Streets with the touchdown. The key for if Ty Streets gets in is does he break the plane before he loses the ball? I think I, I think he certainly did. We'll just take another look at it, though. A beautiful move after he makes the catch, and there it is. There's the touchdown. Once the ball nicks the front plane of that line, it's a touchdown. And you're right. It's the front of the goal line that he has to get the ball across, and Ty Streets did just that. And the 49ers will go back up on top on the 14-yard touchdown reception. Owen Potsman gets the point after, and Ty Streets gets his fourth touchdown reception of the season so far. And the 49ers, we talked about the run in the first quarter. It's all passing so far in the second. Well, Ty Streets off to the best start of his NFL career, now in his fifth year. Only had six touchdowns going into this season. That's his fourth in seven games. Here's Aaron Stecker on his goal line. Ball out. And the 49ers fall on it, but there's still a scramble. Let's see how they sort this one out. 
Here's where you got to have strong hands. Here's where you got to just dig. You can you can steal that ball underneath there. Even if somebody else has got it. Is this where the biting and scratching goes well, on? The scratching because you're digging in with your with your hands. And they say the Buccaneers did recover. No matter San Francisco has the lead and Kurt we talked about the success San Francisco was having with the run and so the Bucks answer is to put eight men in the box so Garcia knows he's got single coverage out here on tie streets so the Tampa two that we talked about earlier with two safeties helping over each of the wide receivers is gone because Tampa Bay is focusing on the run and then tie streets puts a beautiful move on Derek Smith. Oh well, yeah, if you're Dwight Smith, ball. you got to make that tackle knowing you don't have any help behind you, especially at the 14-yard line. First down for the Bucks at the 41. Quick pass dropped by Jamil Cook, the fullback. And we've seen the Tampa Bay Bucks having some problems hanging onto these short passes, right? And we saw Pittman bobble one, which led to the interception on the first drive. We saw Keyshawn Johnson bobble one, although Mike Rump did a nice job of hitting him. And now Jamil Cook having a difficult time hanging on to the football and this was the second ranked offense coming into this week and with the exception of the big 75 yard pass to Keenan McCardell they've struggled so far against this Niner D Thomas Jones the running back lined up out wide to the left Aaron Stecker in the backfield Johnson chased from behind he lost the football and it looks like Kerry Jenkins fell on it Andre Carter, the defensive end, got in there and pulled him down for the sack and the strip. Tell you what, the Bucks retained possession. This is the second time he got the kickoff. Yeah, yeah. They've been lucky. And Andre Carter is starting to own Roman Oban on the outside. We saw him earlier in the game come up with the inside move. This time he comes up and back underneath again to get the sack on Brad Johnson. Only the third sack this Tampa Bay offensive line has given up all season. Buccaneers need the 48-yard line of San Francisco for the first. Underneath, Michael Pittman evades the tackle. Going to be about two yards short of the first down. Zach Bronson finally wrapped him up after Pittman made a couple of moves, but once again, a nice defensive stand by the Niners. We've seen Michael Pittman become more and more involved in this Tampa Bay offense, Kurt, because of the injury to Mike Allstott, who's done for the season. And I've been impressed with Pittman's conditioning because he runs the football in a very violent, aggressive way, and he also is out there running passes in the passing game, running, running routes. Well, he's always been a guy who's in good shape, one of those muscle-bound guys, used to lift weights with David Boston when they were both in Arizona. The questions about Pittman have been more off the field than on in his career. Here's the punt by Tom Tupa. Jimmy Williams lets it go over his head and into the end zone. It looked like Corey Ivey had a chance to try and down that inside the five, but couldn't catch it. Well, a big fan behind Brad Johnson because he's been feeling heat all day, maybe. Well, he has. I, I think that the 49ers have done a good job. And, and the surprising thing to me, though, is I think they've gotten a lot of their pressure, Kurt, not with the blitzes so much, but with the four-man rush with Andre Carter and Bryant Young doing a nice job up front. Here's Garcia off the play fake. Terrell Owens scoops it up. And Owens picks up five yards on the play. Time for us to pick up JB once again for game break. Hey. Thanks, JB. Hey, JB, I thought you played Warren Sapp out in the football field on the pregame show with great dignity today. At least he didn't get hit in the face. That's right. <laughs> like Terry did. After the five-yard pickup, second and five. Barlow. Kevin Barlow. Picks up 12 yards on the run, and the 49ers continue to run the ball however they want. Things so far, 13 carries, 87 yards. Yeah, things are not good for the Tampa Bay defense in stopping the run right now, and I don't see him getting any better without John Lynch here in the football game. And there's John Howell right there who misses the tackle. Howell, Lynch's replacement, misses the tackle on Barlow. And, Kurt, what that's going to do is it's going to open up pass plays to the outside. They're going to have to commit the safety into the run game. Look at the run difference, 87 to minus one. And remember, the Bucks only give up 93 per game. There it is. Big pass play. Owens makes the adjustment and the catch. Tiptoeing along the sideline down to the 19 of Tampa Bay, right in front of Brian Kelly. 
43 yards on the reception. That's that single coverage that I just talked about because the safety has to come up, so Kelly is isolated on Terrell Owens. And it's no surprise that Terrell Owens makes this kind of difficult catch today after dropping three last week against Seattle. I would have been highly shocked and surprised if Terrell Owens didn't come back with a good day today. This part of the 20, Kevin Barlow going nowhere. Booger McFarlane with the tackle. His real name's Anthony, but everybody calls him Booger. Well, you know, Terrell Owens made the big 43-yard reception right there, and it's been a rough year for him so far. Well, I think it has, and, and if you look at this, these run-after-catch yards through six games in the last four seasons, he's really done nothing but, but go down in rack yards, and I think that's why his touchdowns have gone down, because the key to Terrell Owens' game is the yards after the catch. That's what makes him so extraordinarily special as a receiver. Bucks come on the blitz. Garcia forced to get rid of it quickly. Warren Sapp was unblocked, and Garcia didn't want it no part of that one. Yeah, that, that, that's a scary that's a scary thing to see Warren Sapp coming out. And that's that's a mental error by the offensive line. Because you always, if you're going to turn somebody loose, you want to turn the outside guy loose, not the inside guy. And Warren Sapp is the inside guy, and Spires is the outside guy. Warren looked quite rather polite on that play to Jeff Garcia. Well, he hasn't been polite all day. We saw him in the pregame. And they showed it right before our contest from the studio in Los Angeles, kicking the pylon. Well, I can and tell it's you, been a rough week for him as well. I can tell you being fined 50000 for that and being fined for hitting Pete Manning has an effect on any player. Well, there's Garcia. Needed six, gets four. And so he'll be short of the first down. Here we talked about it. Warren Sapp before the game, coming off that $50,000 fine for bumping and verbally abusing officials. Uh, kind of let the league know he's still around by kicking the pylon. Now, there's no specific penalty for that. Yeah, I, I think, but I got a feeling he might get a fine anyway. I think he's going to be fined. And, and he you know, knows it probably. Yeah, and you know, when I spoke to him yesterday, he was he was extremely frustrated and, and I would say almost shaken by what the league has done to him with this unprecedented $50,000 fine. Some would say he's done it to himself. I think this is kind of the accumulation of all the years of Warren Sapp being Warren Sapp. There's a 31-yard attempt by Owen Potsman, and that one's partially blocked. So he won't get that one. And Sapp may have been the guy who got a piece of it. Buccaneers hold strong. It's still a seven-point game. Well, that defensive stand by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers goes in the Warren Sapp column. First with the pressure on Jeff Garcia to make it third and long. And then this right here, the block on the field goal by Sapp. Here he is again. Oh, there he is again right there with the block. But really, Kurt, a terrible kick by Pachman. Yeah. I, mean, I, would, I would contend that I could have blocked that kick. <laughs> From up here, maybe. And so the Buccaneers take over on downs just across their own 20. Thomas Jones with a pickup of four yards on the play. And the Buccaneers' first four possession. And once again, we go back to they had the 79-yard drive which was capped by a 75-yard touchdown pass. Other than that, nothing doing. Two yards, one yard, eight yards. And this, once again, the number two ranked offense in the National Football League. Yeah, but the number five ranked defense for the San Francisco 49ers. 49ers putting up twice as many yards so far in this game. They hand it off to Neil Cook, and he's wrapped up immediately by Travis Kersky. Nowhere to run. He loses a yard on the play. And Kurt, this is, I alluded to this earlier about how impressed I am with this 49er defense and the way, and there's Jim Moore, the defensive coordinator, but the way his guys are able to stop the run because they're light and they're quick and they're always doing a lot of blitzing. But I think Moore has had these guys around enough and he's coached them well enough so that you rarely see a guy out of position. So they always have a man in a gap. So they're able to blitz, and they're able to stop the run at the same time. They need to cross the 30 for the first. Johnson. Cook underneath. Dancing won't get it. Wrapped up by Mike Rumpf and Ahmed Plummer, and they stop the Buccaneers once again without getting a first down. And once again, Andre Carter does not give Brad Johnson the time that he would like to have. Watch Carter with the move here. 
He comes underneath Roman Oven with a simple Howie Long rip, and Brad Johnson has to dump it off quick. And again, as you said, nice tackling by the 49ers linebackers and secondary to keep the run after catch down. So it brings Tom Tupa back on the punt once again to Jimmy Williams. Williams calls for the fair catch at the 25-yard line. 47 yards on the punt, nothing doing on the return. So far, it's been the Niners' game. The pitchers for tonight, Mark Redman, along with Andy Pettit. Garcia, back to pass, tie streets, incomplete. Well, let me ask you this. you have any idea who threw out the first pitch in the history of the Marlins? Well, you know, I mean, I know you always help me out with these trivias, so... John Lynch. John Lynch is the Absolutely. answer. He was drafted in the second round by the Marlins. And as the team celebrates its 10th anniversary this year, he threw out the first pitch on opening day. You know, I think the thing that's exciting about this World Series right now is when you look at the Florida Marlins, right, who have a $63 million payroll to go against the Yankees who have a $180 million payroll, how can a team that spends three times as much on their players lose to a team that, that spends a third less? Well, it's only one game so far. Terrell Owens down the sideline, getting the first down and continuing. Makes a move back inside. Owens with a big run all the way into the end zone for the 49er touchdown. Another 75-yard play. This time, Terrell Owens doing it after the catch. Well, Terrell Owens and Jeff Garcia.